Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. I wanted to give you a little video before I go into work. I work pretty much every day, except for when we had the power out, I didn't work then, but I sweated probably five pounds off because it was in a major heat wave at the temperature of about 96. So you get a fat guy like me trying to sleep when you're over 200, it doesn't work and we uh, undervalue air conditioning so much when we don't have it. But anywho, I'm, I'm coming on here today to lay out about five or six reasons, and they're the top reasons why our president is failing and failing miserably by all of the citizens, at least half, that voted him in and how terrible of a job this guy is doing. They call him Sleepy Joe. I've heard him called Flashbang. Um, I just call him Senile because he really... You know, that guy is out to lunch, and we are suffering heavily for the policies he, he's enacted. So I've got a few here I'm going to touch on. Uh, number one, I'm not going to go with the economy first, but number one, his withdrawal from Afghanistan. That was a very stupid move how he did it, and I take, I I get it. We needed to withdraw out, but there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. And when you leave uh, millions of dollars of military equipment behind, especially when the enemy can get a hold of it and operate it, um, there was a report saying that they could, they could learn to fly planes in about 30 days or something like that or two weeks with the proper training i mean come on joe did you think that 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 stuff was just going to rot out there no our our enemy is using it against their citizens of that country so i mean what was you thinking it's number one okay number two is uh, the energy problem that this president tries to push on us. When I first heard, when he was first in office, when he was saying that they was going to bring first the energy dependence and cut us off, and the way he was talking, I knew right there that that was going to be a disaster. The Keystone Pipeline is cut off. Uh, future oil exploration has been put to a halt. We've actually even uh, done away with the, uh, like I said, the exploration and are going back to going toward, going and going to our enemy and buying oil from them so we could have the vital, uh, they call it dope actually, you know, the oil because if we don't have that, our country doesn't run. You cannot, you cannot power a country the size of America by wind and solar and electricity. Not now when it's not set up to do that. We are not equipped. Maybe in 25, 30 years, we can have the pieces in place to go 30, 40% uh, electric and I'm a big proponent of electric car I would love to have a Tesla I would love to have a Nissan Leaf but it's just not in the cards for the American public right now they do horrible in the winter time because everything is run, run off that battery so it, I mean if you I have an e-bike even if I run my headlight with throttle power my Battery power goes down, 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 down. So that's what people don't understand, that everything that that car uses from a battery is a pull on it. So it's a no-go until we have better technology 
to run the EVs, the electric vehicles. Okay, that's number two. Okay. Uh, number three, and that was the most controversial uh, uh, key here, is the authoritative mandates that he put on the American public on the face diaper and the stab juice. You cannot come down on a country that's free like America and give mandates that's either uh, go with us or don't go with us. Love it or leave it. Um, it's just not going to work. Uh, especially when 120 some million people have already had the virus and have gotten over it. And every study that you read says that natural immunity is better than the stab juice. It's common sense. Look up uh, Dr. John Campbell's uh, YouTube channel. He was one of the first people that give information that was pertinent and correct to what was going on in the pandemic. So that was an abysmal failure, Sleepy Joe. Come on. So moving on here. Um, number four or five here. There's so many I can't keep up. The next one is the persisting topic right now, and that is inflation okay you cannot print dollars more and more and raise interest rates on a down economy and expect to get a good result uh, there is a there is a quote by Lyndon Baines Johnson our former president that said that anytime he went in the Air Force One and touched down anywhere in the United States, his approval rating rose by 20 points. Our president, just through goodwill, can get the right pieces in place and he can curb off this inflation by a lot, just by his candor, his demeanor, getting the right people together and to solve this. But when you have an administration that their press secretary says, well, there's really not, we can do not a lot. And then Joe is, uh, Sleepy Joe is blaming everything on Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Where have we heard this before? Oh, I don't know, Brady Bunch. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Russia did not bring the gas rates up by double because we wasn't even in a conflict uh, not a year ago. These, these rates started rising right after Trump was out of office. So this is solely on Joe. Joe, his policies are the reason why we have $5 a gallon gas and $6 a gallon diesel and that's five in Ohio and California we're up to seven to eight dollars this country can't sustain itself one of the uh, one of my sources that I pull from he's got a couple friends that are in the trucking business and they have small it's a small business like with three trucks and his one friend said that his each truck is fifteen hundred dollars a day for a semi he has three of them. That's $4,500. He said his fuel bill last week was 20000 And he said his friend, my source, his friend said that, mark my words, you will see empty shelves in a month unless something changes. This cannot be sustainable. And we're not getting any word out of the White House what they're going to do. Natural gas is kaput. We used to be the Saudi Arabia of natural gas, and now we're nothing in the market. All the gains we've got from the last four years and 18 months, poof. 
So, I don't know. I don't know, guys. And the most controversial topic of the day is pitting the parent versus the child. And what do I mean by that? This administration is so in the tank for the alphabet squad, for uh, the teachers knowing more than the parents. This administration is handcuffing states to tell the states to tell the parents to butt out their children's lives. You know, we've got uh, some teachers out there right now that's teaching kids uh, that uh, they can have two daddies and it's okay and we have to enact laws to protect uh, families with that scenario and I get it what you do in the bedroom is your is your business but when you bring it to the forefront as your policy to give protections so much to where you exclude a parent out and that child's learning, you're overstepping your bounds. That's a big misstep from this administration. So that's about all I have right now, guys. That's a lot of, a lot of points that I'll give you right there. Uh, I could go on with about five more, but the, the, the short of the long is this, unless our president snaps out of his policies, he is going to drag down this country and put an anchor around the ankle of every small American family to where they are not going to be able to keep their head above water. We are seeing the impact now. Some families are choosing to either to uh, drive two cars or one car and have the other spouse take them to work. That's another problem. You got to drive double. Uh, whether they're going to be able to even go on vacation because of the energy crisis, whether they're going to be able to have a good family dinner twice a week versus eating small because of the fuel crisis. These are all very real problems going on and what uh, they call flyover country, small middle America, people that do not make a whole lot of money. And that makes up of a vast majority of this country. So we just need to ride it out, I guess, for now. I don't know what the answer is, but all I know is to bring it to the forefront so this can be acknowledged and maybe we can figure something out here because our president is not doing what he said. He said he was a uniter and he's been a divider. So, you know, uh, what I've done is uh, bought a lot of food here lady for my, lately for my food security and have just stuck back every dollar I can. I will not tell anybody what to do and force them, but if you can put a little bit of money back, put food back, you know, this could be the rainy day, quote unquote. So guys, these videos, I hate making these doom and gloom videos. I hate it with all my heart. I want to make good videos, but the average person needs to be warned, you know? Uh, most people are oblivious. They don't know what's going down the road. And uh, all of us bringing this to the forefront, that's your roadside sign to let you know exactly where, what path we're on, guys. So that's about all I have today, guys. I love every one of you. You guys are so very special to me. I appreciate everybody's, um, the new subscribers the comments and it means the world to me that i'm making just a wee bit of difference in that guys so until another video i appreciate you all we'll see you down the road bye